Official SteamOS support for other handhelds is finally here from Valve, and in this video I wanted to see how these three devices stack up against each other. What we've got here is the new Lenovo Legion Go S, and this was originally the Windows version with the Z2 Go and 32 gigs of RAM. Of course, we've got the Steam Deck OLED and the original ROG Ally. We're going to be taking a look at price, overall performance, and battery life between these three handhelds. And I do want to mention that with the ROG Ally that I have here, I've got an upgraded 65 watt hour battery, but I did some testing with the original 40 watt hour battery. So we'll also throw that into the mix. So we'll also throw that into the mix. And the main reason I wanted to put the original Ally in here is because you can get these for a really good deal, either open box, used, or they go on sale all the time over at Best Buy. The first thing we're going to be taking a look at here is pricing and specs. Going down the list here, there's one thing I want to mention. When it comes to the new Legion Go, there's actually two different versions with that Ryzen Z2 Go. The one I have here has 32 gigs of RAM and originally came installed with Windows, but we'll take a look at the Steam version also. I've got that one on the way, plus the Z1 Extreme version is coming too, so I'll have videos on those also. The Steam Deck OLED has been on the market for a while now, and we've got a custom AMD APU based on Zen 2. Four cores, eight threads, an 8 compute unit RDNA 2 iGPU, and 16 gigs of RAM. My favorite thing about the Steam Deck OLED is ease of use, and of course the OLED display. It's a 7.4 inch 90 hertz OLED. This has been my go-to, it's been a lot of people's go-to handheld gaming device. You can get these new for $549 or $649, and I didn't throw storage into the mix because it is easily upgraded across the board, or you could just add micro SD cards. Valve is also offering the OLED refurbished anywhere from $439 to $519. Moving over to the Legion Go with the Ryzen Z2 Go APU, it's based on Zen 3 Plus, so uh, I mean clock for clock it is putting down better performance than the Zen 2 APU in the Steam Deck. But we've got the same amount of cores here, 4 cores, 8 threads, does clock up a bit higher, and that RDNA 2 iGPU in this clocks up to 2200 megahertz, and instead of eight compute units, we've got 12 over there. 16 or 32 gigs, depending on the model, but both of them are running at 6400 megahertz. And we've got a much larger screen here, and it does make a difference. It might not sound like a lot going from 7.4 up to eight, but it is a huge screen on this thing. And I think it looks great. It's not an OLED, it's IPS, variable refresh rate, 120 hertz. You can get these new anywhere from $649 to $599, depending on the version. And open box are on sale right now over at Best Buy around $580. And finally, the original ROG Ally. Ryzen Z1 Extreme, based on Zen 4, 8 cores, 16 threads, up to 5.1 gigahertz. There's no doubt that the CPU side of this APU can outperform the Steam Deck and the Z2 Go, I mean, every single day. It's got a 12 compute unit, RDNA 3 iGPU up to 2700 megahertz. We get 16 gigs of RAM with this. It's running at 6400 megahertz. And when I've got all three of these devices together, the screen on this is feeling kind of small. It's a seven inch IPS, variable refresh rate, 120 hertz. You can get these new for 649, open box or on sale over at Best Buy, anywhere from 440 to 549. And I'll tell you what, with official SteamOS installed on the ROG Ally, it does make it a whole new device. The only downside is, if you're running a stock battery, it's very small. I mean, it's a 40 watt hour battery. Luckily, we do have options to upgrade this. I've got the JSOC 65 watt hour battery in here. And with it set up like this, I can get better battery life than the Legion Go S. And in most cases, better than the Steam Deck, at least when we're playing AAA games. When it comes to indie games, very low wattage, I mean like five to seven watts, Steam Deck still wins across the board. I mean, it's super optimized, but this is getting real close with that larger battery. Right now I'm playing Spider-Man 2, 900p, frame gen on medium settings, and I'm getting over 70 FPS on average with it. Feels pretty good on this VRR display, and uh, yeah, I mean, at 20 watts, this thing does perform really well with AAA games. Now I want to move over to some side-by-side -side benchmark comparisons between these three devices. The first game we have here is Black Myth Wukong, and I'm actually really impressed at how well this runs on the Steam Deck with no FSR frame generation. Another thing I want you to keep an eye on is total battery draw, and it's pretty even across the board. And keep in mind, with the original Ally I have, I've got the upgraded battery mod with this one. 
but at the end of the benchmark at 720p low settings, 15 watt TDP on all of these devices, the Steam Deck OLED managed 49 FPS, the Legion Go S with that Z2 Go managed 49 FPS, so they're even right there with this one, but the ROG Ally came in with a 54 FPS average. Checking out the built-in benchmark for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and one thing that I kind of find really interesting here for the Ally and the Ally X, is in some cases, at a 15 watt TDP, these devices do draw less from the battery than even the Steam Deck OLED. And of course, since we've got that Z1 Extreme in the ROG Ally, we do get better performance here, even at a 15 watt TDP, 720p, low settings, Steam Deck OLED averaged 57, the Legion Go S 59, and the original ROG Ally up to 53. I've tested this with the ROG Ally X and we can manage 54 to 55 over there. And I think it comes down to the RAM being a bit faster over there, running at 7,500 megahertz instead of 64 on the original Ally. And the final side-by-side -side I wanted to run here was Cyberpunk 2077. 720p Steam Deck preset, 15 watt TDP, we wanted to stick right there. With the Legion Go S and the ROG Ally, we can bring the wattage up, see better performance, but even at 15 watts, both of these other devices aren't bad at all. And again, check out that battery draw, sitting at around 24 and a half watts on the Steam Deck OLED and the Legion Go S, but over on the ROG Ally, 23 watts. And for Cyberpunk 2077 at that 15 watt preset, on the Steam Deck OLED, average of 44, Legion Go S does bring it up to 50, but you can see the ROG Ally is up to 58. But that's not all, because with both the Legion Go S and the ROG Ally, we can bring the wattage up and get even better performance. The last thing I wanted to talk about here was battery life, and through all of my testing, we're at a 50% screen brightness on all of these devices. Steam Deck has that 50 watt hour battery, we've got a 55.5 watt hour battery in the Legion Go S, and a 40 watt hour battery in the ROG Ally, but they do offer upgrades. I'm up to a 65 watt in the one I have, but with low end seven watt indie gaming, you can get five plus hours out of the Steam Deck. Same thing with the Legion Go S. On the Ally with the stock battery, three hours and 30 minutes, or with the upgraded five plus. 15 watt AAA gaming on the Steam Deck, two hours, same with the Legion Go S. And on the Ally with the 40 watt hour, one hour and 30 minutes, but with the upgraded battery, that takes us up to two hours and 30 minutes. And finally, 30 watt AAA gaming. On the Steam Deck, we can't do that. We can only go up to 15 watts, but on the Legion Go S, around an hour and 20 minutes of gameplay. On the Ally with the stock battery, you're only gonna get one hour out of it. It's actually like one hour and eight minutes. With the upgraded battery, one hour and 40 minutes. So yeah, you could definitely get some decent battery life out of the Ally. If you've already got one, upgrading might make sense. And just to kind of give you an idea here, we've got Cyberpunk 2077 running at a 20 watt TDP, Steam Deck preset 900p with FSR frame gen on. We're seeing around 74 FPS on average. Every once in a while we get a dip here or there. I'd say taking it up to around 22 watts or just taking it to medium settings because with the Steam Deck preset, it actually does take some of these to high, and on a handheld, I mean, medium still looks great, especially on a smaller screen like this. Obviously, that Z1 Extreme APU is going to outperform the Steam Deck and the Legion Go with that Z2 Go. Uh, when it comes down to it, I've always liked the feel of the original Ally, and some people might disagree. It doesn't have the best analog sticks, but they will get you by. And there's a great aftermarket and mod scene for the original ROG Ally. So there's tons of stuff that we can do to this device. But I'd say the best upgrade for this device would be a larger battery. I'll leave a link in the description. Legion Go S, in my opinion, is the more comfortable handheld. And I do like the larger display. It would be nice if it's OLED, but at least we've got a variable refresh rate 120 hertz display. And I personally think it's a really good looking handheld. Again, that Z1 Extreme version is on the way, so I'll have a video on that coming up. And of course, Steam Deck, still king. It's the one I go to, and it's not gonna put down the performance that that Z1 Extreme puts down. And even the Legion Go can outperform this in some games out there. But when it comes to maximum battery life for indie games, the Steam Deck is where it's at. It's a comfortable handheld, beautiful 7.4 inch OLED display, built-in trackpads, and the controls on this thing are spot on. 
but there's a lot of choices now because we've got the option to install official Steam OS on a ton of different devices. So in the end, I mean, it's really up to you. Are you looking for better performance? I would go with the Z1 Extreme version or wait till the Z2 Extreme is released. If you're looking for maximum compatibility and battery life, I would go with the Steam Deck. And if you just want that bigger display and a really comfortable handheld, the Legion Go S with Steam OS installed would also be a pretty nice choice. But that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite handheld is. It doesn't have to be one that we have here. I'd love to know what everybody's using out there. If you've got any questions, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.